On this week's episode, I talk about my finished projects, what I'm currently working on. I also take you along on two plying the bison spin that I've done over the last couple of weeks. I've also started dyeing yarn for April, and I thought eh, maybe you'd be interested in that as well. So if you are, stick around and let's get started. Hi, my name is Tiffany, and I'm the dyer and maker behind Lita Valley Fiber Co. You can follow me on Instagram at Lita Valley Fiber Co. You can find my shop on Etsy at latavalleyfiberco.etsy.com. If you'd like to direct message me, you can do that through email, lvfiberco at gmail.com. This week is spring break here in Washington. And so my son is home, um, and you may hear a little noise in the background um, as he's trying to stay quiet, but we'll see how it goes. So I, uh, this week, did not get as much done. I finished some socks, um, but I, I've been preoccupied with keeping him busy doing fun things, spring break, you know. Um, so I did get a little bit of knitting done and I'll show you that here. Um, I didn't actually finish, did I finish anything? I did finish some socks, but I've wrapped those and sent them off, um, on their way to the new owner. So, um, or the new home. Um, so, and I don't think I took any pictures actually. Not good, Tiffany, not good. Um, so I guess I'll just talk about, uh, what I'm working on. Okay. I am currently working on a pair of socks, a hat, and I did some mending on some socks that have gotten a lot of love. So let's start with the socks I'm working on. This is in my hand dyed yarn. It's my sock yarn. So it's 75% wool and 25% recycled nylon. These are a pair of men's socks. And um, the yarn is Storm Clouds. And then this was a mini that was part of a pack that um, I, it didn't have a name because it was some extras. It's kind of a pinkish color. Um, so these are not blocked yet, so they're a little wonky. <laughs> um, I cast on, let's see, 12 stitches per needle, two needles, um, for a total of 24 stitches. And then I increased to 60 stitches and then started the ribbed pattern. And I just did a three by one ribbed on the top. I did my normal heel, which is the shadow wrap heel. And then I started ribbing on the back as well. Um, so before I started the cuff. These are gonna be a little bit shorter um, socks because I've doubled the yarn. Um, and I didn't want to run out. So this is fingering weight yarn generally. So I've doubled it, which means it's uh, DK, possibly sport weight. Um, so that's why I only did six, 60 stitches as well. So this is the first sock. I am currently working on the second sock and I'm doing a uh, magic loop. So two, two needles, um, and I knit the front and then swap and knit the back. I've already done the heel and I'm working on the leg. So these will be done today. They're actually kind of fun. I generally do um, vanilla socks. And so I thought I'm gonna change it up and do a ribbed sock. And uh, when I'm knitting for somebody else, it's always a little daunting if I don't know exactly how it'll fit. 
I generally knit va vanilla socks. Um, but since I'm knitting these for somebody else, I like to do a little bit of ribbing in there, whether it's on the top or the bottom, just so that it fits snugly around their foot. So that is the second. And again, I'm using my hand dyed yarn. This is Storm Clouds in the fingering weight sock yarn. So though, that's actually my half finished object, but it works. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I'm working on is a hat. And this is also for a customer. Um, it's not a pattern. I'm just doing ribbing um, all the way up and then decreasing. And it's tangled for some reason. Okay, here's some yarn I'm using. This is my uh, organic worsted. And it is the Selkirk Sunset colorway. Okay. Um, boy, I really got this tangled. Oh my goodness. Nope. That just tangled it more. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wowzers. Okay, here we go. So basically I've just started um, casting on. So actually that looks like kind of big. So I had actually knit this hat. Um, maybe I should go down a needle size. Um, I'm knitting this on 4.5. Actually, four might be better. Um, I might have to take this out. It's for a kid, um, a little girl. Uh, she's nine. And I had knit it before and it was too small. So they returned it and I am knitting another size. Um, but this looks ginormous. This looks like it would fit an adult. I can't remember how many stitches I cast on. I think 120. So I could pull it out and knit a um, hundred stitches or I could decrease the needle size. <laughs> uh, again, these are 4.5, so that might be a little big. The fabric is is pretty gapy, actually. I can see right through it. So, yes, this might be ripped out. <laughs> we'll see. But again, this is my hand-dyed yarn, um, Selkirk Sunset, in my worsted uh, base, organic worsted. Okay. So I'll keep you posted on that one. <laughs> uh, the next project is I had um, some socks that needed some mending. So I went ahead, they were um, both had holes right at the bottom of the heel. And these socks have been well loved and well worn. Um, I can't remember, I'm trying to think I think this is Patton's Croy from, from uh, Joann's. So here's the heel. I, what I did, um, I've done several different methods before, but this had, a, uh, this one in particular had a hole about this big, no fiber, no nylon nothing there. So how do you fill in this hole? Um, what I did was I basically weaved. So I threaded yarn going um, up and down. And then I came across and weaved my uh, needle through it until the hole was filled in. And, and then even that um, wasn't quite, I could still see through it. So I went back over it twice. 
a total of two times um, with this one. And then this, uh, I also did the weaving technique. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it turned out okay. I am curious to see if you can feel it on the bottom of your foot. And you may for a while, but hopefully it will felt. I did use the same yarn. I kept um, what I had left over from knitting this originally, and I labeled it and put it in a baggie, um, knowing that the likelihood of uh, needing socks needing a little bit of repair um, was pretty high. So I kept it, and I'm glad I did because it matches this was the black section, but at least it goes together. So there you have it. That's my finished projects was the, was the socks and uh, what I'm working on, uh, socks and hat. So that is it for um, projects I'm working on. Okay, so let's move on to some spinning. Okay, let's get started on the spinning project. I'm using my Olacraft ball winder, which is new this week to me. So I'm excited to use that and see how it works. It's made with uh, nylon gears, so I'm hoping that it will last longer. <laughs> my other ball winder gave up the ghost um, after a few, you know, actually it's been a couple years that I've had it. So it lasted pretty long. This is made of a lot of metal. So I'm hoping that it will last much longer than two years. Okay, the fiber I'm using is the bison. And as you can see, I was able to get it all on this one bobbin. It is, however, very full. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's over the top a little bit, but um, it should work out. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to hook it to my Lazy Kate and then I'm going to cake it up. This, um, I would, I'm going to two ply, so it needs to, it, and the way I'm gonna do that. There, there are several ways. I could have made two bobbins, equally weighed yarn, um, and spun it from two bobbins. But the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to make a cake and then pull from the center and the outside and two ply it together. So it's a little easier management. I have done that before. I like the result. So let's get started. Find the end, and I'm gonna feed it through here. <laughs> okay, this one is a little bit more um, complicated. There we go, as it has um, two, um, one here, and then a duplicate one on the winder. And I have noticed that I did try this out and <laughs> it's a little different. So let's give it a go. And I am gonna put a little drag on. The one, <laughs> the one thing I've noticed with this Lazy Kate is that there's no, there's a lot of draft. There's no, um, what do you call it? It doesn't have a speed controller, so I'm gonna put my finger here, because um, I don't want this. That <laughs> is not gonna be good on, on the cake. So I'm going to give it a little bit of tension. Um, not too much. Oh, I don't know. Nope, it needs a little bit more tension. Um, okay. It's going pretty good. Okay, that's better. So it actually does need quite a bit of tension to keep it um, 
nice and firm. And you don't want it to be sloppy as a cake either. You want it to come out nice and um, perfect. Whoop. A little off on my drag there. The thing about this ball winder, one of the reasons I got it is that you can put a ginormous cake of yarn on there. Um, and my other one, if I, if I caked up bulky yarn, it was pretty, it was at capacity. So I am putting, um, boop, I am putting um, bulky yarn in my shop. And so I wanted it to, um, um, you know, I wanted to be able to use it. Okay, so what happened is I hit an unspun area. The nice thing about wool is that, um, oop, gotta go the right way. Nope, that's not the right way. bit of unspun and so it pulled right out. I suppose I could just do this with my hand. Um, I was learning how to uh, long draw spin and uh, for a woolen yarn and um, so a bit of it was unspun, you know, as you're learning a new thing. It, well, this seems to be working. Ooh, nope, see, it's over spinning there. Hmm. Even pressure. <laughs> I should get my husband to build me a um, a little bit of tension. I've seen some that come with a tension wheel, so um, but my finger works just as well. So the thing about woolly wool is you can split splice, add a little uh, spit and um, a little bit of friction and um, link that wool back together. Or you can't do that with uh, super wash or um, super wash or what's the other one? Um, ooh, and that one got a little thin. So I'm gonna do the same thing, add a little spit, a little bit of friction. Oops, come out of there as well. Okay. All right, we are going again. what I was talking This is going to be one ginormous cake. <laughs> That's woolen spun yarn for you, I guess. I've never done it before, so. 
It's all new to me. tell I was a little I'm a newbie I'm a noob I'm pretty impressed. Okay, there's my giant ball of yarn. Uh, let's begin the plying process, shall we? Okay, here's my cake of yarn. Let's take from the center here and also the outside. And we're gonna connect these both to our leader. Mm. <clears throat> oh, it would help if I connected the wheel. Okay, my goal is to keep this wool and spun and I've never, I haven't plied wool and spun together. So I don't know how to do that. So we're gonna learn together. Okay, so I spun counterclockwise my single. So you wanna do the opposite. So I'm now gonna spin clockwise. Okay, we're going to get it well attached, okay, oh, okay, I don't want it that loose, so I may have to guide it somewhat. Okay, well I hope this pressure I'm putting on it is not going to um, <laughs> push all the air out of it. Maybe that's why you wash it and thwack, give it a good thwack. Okay. 
Uh, let's check the, oh, my tension is too high. Oh, it's very balanced. Yeah, very balanced. Um, it's pretty, uh, it's not spinning, um, very, the coil isn't very tight, but you know, it's a good, it's a good balanced yarn. So maybe that's why, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, maybe I will put, sometimes I put a finger in between. That helps to build a little bit more twist before it goes into, onto the bobbin. It is pulling too fast <clears> onto <throat> the bobbin. I'm gonna lower my tension a little bit. There we go. It's garbage day. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be lovely yarn. <laughs> So, I've heard from a few of you um, about, uh, off of my latest episodes, um, so I hope you find this final product <laughs> um, as exciting as I do. I'm really looking forward to knitting with this. I had someone comment about making mittens, um, which I think is a great idea. It would be a really warm mitten. So I live in Eastern Washington with my husband and our son Hudson, who is nine. And so we do get pretty good winters here, um, pretty cold. So some warm mittens would be really nice. I do have a pair of mittens that I knit out of fingering weight uh, superwash. And they're just not, they're warm, but they're not as warm as this would be. <laughs> so. That would be, um, yeah. So mittens are a good idea. Thank you for the suggestion. A hat would be nice too, but I have so many hats um, that now I'm knitting hats for, well, I've always knitted hats for other people too, but now I'm knitting business hats for customers, so. But I don't want to use this. I, I want to keep this. <laughs> it's very, uh, this has been a fun project and a unique project as well, so. Well, what have you guys done for spring break? 
can leave a comment and let me know what you guys did. Uh, two days ago, I took my son to a trampoline place and he had a great time um, spending lots of energy <laughs> doing the trampoline. And I worked on some socks. So that was kind of fun. We enjoyed that. And then we went out for lunch afterwards. And uh, we're headed to the park later this week, which we go to the park anyway, but um, yeah, hopefully the weather will be nice. We aren't doing too many things different. We're just able to do more of them throughout the day because most of our morning is spent in school. Um, and then we have afternoons free, generally speaking, to do uh, fun things. So now we just have more time to do things. I had wanted to take him to see uh, Mount St. Helens. Um, so uh, I checked into that. They still have snow over there. And so <laughs> I thought, well, I guess we won't do that during spring break. Maybe we'll go um, after school is over in uh, June. So, whatever you guys have done with your kiddos, I hope it was fun and that you had good weather. Our weather has been off and on um, pretty cold in the 30s, and we've had snow. <laughs> so, <laughs> snow in April. had to oil my wheel because my la last video it was pretty squeaky and even I was somewhat irritated <laughs> oh my goodness how come I didn't notice that so it is freshly oiled and hopefully not coming across squeaky I don't know about you guys, but I am really looking forward to the end of the school year. I do really well the first part, and then January hits and you come back from Christmas break and it's like, oh man, gotta get back to it. I almost wish you wouldn't take a break at Christmas. You know, like, sure, a couple days right around Christmas, but three almost three weeks oh it's too much because <laughs> then you try to get back into the routine of things and it's challenging and then I'm just waiting both of us my son and I are just waiting for <laughs> spring spring break that means that summer's almost here <laughs> so This is spinning up really nice. I think it'll be great.
I hope you're enjoying this slightly different episode. It's kind of combined with bonus episode and um, I don't know, I am somewhat finding it a little challenging to put up an episode every week just because I don't have a whole lot to talk about spinning wise or not spinning wise knitting knitting and spinning wise um, all the time you know so I guess we'll see how it goes I don't know let me know are you guys enjoying weekly vlogs I could do bi-weekly or even monthly Although monthly, I feel like for me would be a little bit long because I'm doing, uh, if I do a gift knit or some work knits, then um, I try to get those out quickly to the customer and wouldn't necessarily have them to show. So yeah. outside our front window here and it's a gray cloudy looks like it could rain my furnace has kicked on a few times so it's must be cold we keep our furnace between 58 and 60 degrees so it's pretty cold outside if it chooses to kick on. <laughs> finding this to be a little bit thick and thin which isn't terrible but maybe with a good washing and a thwacking it'll even out a little bit more that would be nice It's probably going to be between a worsted and Aran weight overall. With some DK, probably. Spots, anyway. <laughs> So 
Okay, so today I'm going to take you on a little dyeing uh, experiment. Uh, not really experiment, adventure, I guess. Um, I'm in the process of dyeing bulky weight yarn, and I have 10 skeins that I'm going to be dyeing. Now, in my dyeing journal, I have Kutch, which I'm hoping to get a uh, reddish brown out of. And then I also have sap and wood, um, sap and wood bark, sap and wood sawdust. Uh, both of these you soak overnight and then dump them into your dye bath. This doesn't have any residue, um, but the sawdust has sawdust. So I'm going to strain it out using my strainer and then we'll get to dyeing. So just looking at my notes. Okay, for the cutch, I am adding soda ash at 2% weight of fiber, uh, which will help get the reddish brown color. And then this I'm hoping to get um, brown. Brown? We'll see. Okay, let's get started. That's a lovely color, isn't it? It's possible to pull more color out of the sawdust, so I am going to keep that um, and try it again. The thing with natural dye is that it's not very pigmented some of the time, most of the time. Um, so you kind of want to use as much of it as you can. Okay, so there's the sawdust. I am going to cook it down again and see if I can get more color out of it. But I will save that for a later time. Right now, I have what I want to dye the five skeins of bulky. So I'm going to set this aside. Dump this into my pot. And begin to add water. Now with the cutch, um, I'm going to add that soda ash to it to get it more of a reddish brown. So they actually look very similar. That's same. That's a little bit deeper. I don't know. Hard to say. I have two different dye pots going. Actually, I'm going to move you over so you can see a little bit better. Okay, two dye pots. This one is 30 gallons and this one is, I'm not sure. Uh, this has the sap and wood sawdust and this has the cutch. I don't want any color to go to waste. So I'm going to rinse and rinse and rinse.
Okay, so with the Kutch, I am adding soda ash at 2% weight of fiber. I am dyeing 500 grams of bulky superwash yarn. So 2% of 500 is 10. So 10 grams of soda ash I'm going to add to my pot. Then I'm going to add the yarn. Now the yarn I pre uh, scoured, I pre mordanted yesterday. So it has dried on the rack. I'm going to wet it and then add it to the pot and we'll get to cooking. So let me get the soda ash. Okay, there's 2%. No, 10 grams. <laughs> okay, Tiff, pay attention here. 10 grams, not, okay, there we go. We're gonna start heating and add the yarn. Oh, I like it. Oh, look at that. So, Kutch needs a long two hour cooking time. So, oh, it's beautiful. It's definitely the red, red brown. So I'm just making sure that um, it is all the yarn is getting in there. I do small batch dyeing about five skeins each pot. So Kutch, I will rise to between 160 and 180 and then set the timer for two hours. Okay, there's plenty of water in here. It's completely covered. And my husband's calling. Hello. Hello. Hey. How's it going? Oh, I. So one of the reasons that you re-wet your yarn or you dye with wet yarn is so that the dye goes evenly across the skein. And because um, if it if it's dry, then that takes a little bit longer for the color to saturate. Ooh, guys, <laughs> this color. Look at that. Oh, lovely. And as you can see, this section was dry. <laughs> I didn't get it wet, so there's no color adhering to it. So.
Generally speaking, I go straight from mordanting to dyeing, um, and I don't allow my yarn to dry overnight. Um, that helps to um, allow the color to bond to the fiber uh, much better. And I can already tell that um, <laughs> this fiber is going to have a problem. <laughs> um, because part of it was dry. And I'm hoping, see here, I'm hoping that it will even out as the heat gets to it. So I'm gonna cook these, uh, get them to temperature, and then um, let them cook for uh, this one, the kutch about two hours, and this one about 30 minutes. I'll watch the dye pot and see if all of the dye adheres to the yarn. If it doesn't, I'll cook it a little bit longer. Okay, I'll see you back in a little bit. There is a lot of color left in the pot, so I'm going to hold on to it for a little bit before I decide.
this sit in the soapy water for about 10 minutes before we rinse and hang to dry. Okay, I have decided to rinse the kutch and so far it's this lovely russet color. So let's rinse. Okay, I'm going to let this set for 10 minutes and then we'll give the final rinse. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a long day, but I've gotten a lot accomplished. Um, so that's always a good day, isn't it? Um, I'll show you the results here. This is the Kutch, um, which is this lovely orange brown, rustic brown. Um, it's lovely. I really like it. And then this is the sap and wood uh, sawdust, which is this beautiful pink color. I'm bringing these to the shop this week, so if you're interested, you can check it out there. Thank you so much for joining me on this long vlogging day, and I'll see you in the next video.